Sometimes people have what it takes, but they haven't recognized it yet. Just go forward. So what do you need to do? How do you stand out? So what you need to do is be that person that's different and is bigger than you think. Rise from the ashes and fly like the phoenix. Welcome, everyone. Hello, everybody. It's Monday morning. Um, I want to t- talk to you about being more productive, about actually getting stuff done and not being as confused when you do it. And feeling like you've actually got the capability to get things going, to make it work. Because a lot of people get frustrated. They get confused. They think that, you know, whether it's, you know, maybe you think it's a language barrier, it's technology, it's your time commitment, a financial. I just, I can't do it. This isn't for me. I don't know what's going on. And we we struggle. We look at people that have succeeded. We look at guys like Blake. You look at others and you go, man, if only I was more like them. If only I could do that. If I was born with that same amount of talent, if I had the brain that he did, some of you guys listen, I got a couple of messages back and I talked about it on the call with Blake. If you pay attention to any of the calls that that we do, he's consistently dropping quotes from individuals, from books, from speeches, from other things. And he's always using these quotes that he's just memorized and it's fantastic, right? He's got an amazing brain for it. Some people go, oh, if I could think like he does, I would... Fill in the blank. So we always look at that. I want you think about throughout your life how many people you've seen with a supreme level of talent. Something is just stupendous. And then I want you to think about what they did with it. Now, occasionally on these, I share stories from my own life that I think may be relevant. In this case, I've got one. I have a, a friend that I grew up with who was one of my best friends. Well, really, my best friend, absolutely, for years growing up. Um, from the first time I moved from Oakland, California to Prescott, Arizona, it's a very small town, uh, went from a very large, diverse city in Oakland, California to a town of about 20,000 at the time, 25,000 maybe in Prescott, um, went from a friend group in Oakland where I was the only, you know, white kid and everybody was every, I mean, every nationality you can think of, we were all friends and it was fantastic. I went from that to Oakland, Cal- or to Prescott, Arizona, where everybody looked like me. Um, and it, it was not diverse in any way. Well, my best friend growing up there in, in uh, Prescott, Arizona was a kid named Brandon. Brandon um, and his family, I, it was me and my brother and him and his brothers, and we were all best of friends. And so we would ride bikes and we would, you know, go down to the sports collective collectible shop to collect baseball cards and things and comics and we'd play basketball and we injured each other many times you know playing pickup in the driveway or boxing and you know doing other silly stuff like boys do we'd play baseball we would do everything well we hit um high school and brandon and his brothers hit a bit of a growth spurt so by senior year of high school brandon was six seven and about 300 pounds. He was a big kid. And he played defensive tackle. And he was a monster on the football field. He was a beast. Um, and uh, just so quick off the line. And his arms, yeah, I mean, when you're that tall, your arms are typically pretty long. But he, have a, he had a wingspan. Uh, equivalent of someone that's about seven foot. So his arms were even longer, right? And his hands were like, you know, his hands and feet look like Sasquatch, Harry and the Hendersons, right? Mm -hmm. Just a big, big kid. And he was great. Awesome talent. But he didn't work his talent too much. You guys know anyone like that? Someone that's just super intelligent and they don't apply it? Someone that's great at something naturally, but they don't put themselves into it. Then you have others that come along that just work. And there was, you know, another kid that played offensive tackle, not nearly the same size, not nearly the same speed off the ball. But man, that kid worked and he worked and he worked and he worked and he ran longer and he ran harder and he pushed himself more. And the level that he ended up getting to, at least in high school, you know, they both were selected for the all-county team. They both were selected for the all-state team. Brandon ended up going and playing at a four-year university, a major university, D1 school, simply because of his size. 
Um, the other kid didn't because he wasn't the right size and didn't meet all the other requirements, you know, had opportunities to go walk on in a couple of places, but just wasn't the pathway that he was wanting to go to. But at the end of the senior year, you know, Brandon was Brandon, awesome kid, but the other guy was ended up winning the, the school's, you know, best athlete of the ma- best male athlete of the year. Right. Won a scholarship that helped pay for community college that first year. And Brian went on to play for his four, you know, at this four year school, but never pushed himself, never did much in the weight room, didn't worry about his diet. You know, and he got to the point where everybody else was just as good or better than he was. And the only thing that was going to keep him going was if he pushed himself and he didn't. Now, in life itself, Brandon went a different pathway, became very successful at what he did. He's great. Awesome guy. He's still out there crushing, doing what he does. But he had this talent that, man, what he could have done there could have been stupendous. How many of you guys look at life and go, you know, if I just had that talent. The difference, though, between the two and then a lot of other people is just that work ethic. Right. I mean, if if for those of you guys that are familiar with, um, you know, I mean, professional sports, when you look at things, there's the typical athletic look that they look for in certain things. Right. In the NFL. Some of the best players, though, over the last few years, if we look at receivers, you know, they want them to be a certain height and everything else. Some of the best receivers over the last couple of years have been, you know, five foot eight, five foot seven. They're just fast. They just work hard. One of the best soccer players in the world over the last 20 years is a guy out of Argentina that's about that big, but he works, right? Messi, okay, some of you guys, I know some of you guys have heard of that, heard that name, football for the rest of the world. And then there's American football, right? But look, your business here online and the other things, guys, it works the same way. You don't come into this fully capable. And I think one of the biggest obstacles that a lot of you face is that you you start this off and you want to be as comfortable and as capable with this as everything else that you've done in your life that you've spent five or 10 or 20 years doing. And you're not that comfortable right away. And for the first few weeks or the first few months, you go, oh, my God, this isn't for me and I can't get going. And what's keeping me back? And I just I'm never going to learn. And why aren't I any good? Damn it. You're comparing yourself to this other profession that you've done for 20 years. Of course, you're not going to be good. Right. When I got started online, I I was cleaning carpet. It doesn't transition. I had to learn everything from brand new. I could polish the hell out of a marble floor. I could make sure if you had mold in the house, I could come through and clean it to a point where, you know, you'd have the hygienist come through afterwards and take a test and man, clean down to the millions and tens of millions of spores where it just disappears. That doesn't equate to writing a good ad a good headline, connecting with someone, understanding the marketing process, the technology. You've got to learn it all at the beginning and start over. But it starts, you don't start with comfort and confidence. You don't start with capability. It starts with clarity and understanding what you want to achieve. And there's a whole process. I'll do a training later this week, I think, on on developing confidence and what that whole process actually looks like. But it starts with clarity. And the thing that will give you confidence more than anything, the thing that will answer more questions than any other thing you're ever going to do is going to be taking action. It's taking action and leveraging things that you already have access to. So many times I'm working with people and, and they can't find the answer. And you've got it. Guys, between the dashboard, between these calls, between Facebook, between other levels of training, other things that you have access to, every single question that you could possibly ask about your business has already been asked and answered. I promise you. Right? Truthfully, I think I might get an absolutely unique question once a month, maybe. Maybe. Right? My point is, is, If you want to stop being scared, use what you've got and take action. So a couple of key elements here. We're going to talk about action and micro commitments and other things like that. So 
first thing to remember is every grand slam, every major success, every big, big success wasn't necessarily built off of some major event. Your success with this business isn't going to be one major decision. It's going to be from a series of micro commitments. Small and simple things. That's how you build something great by small and simple things. So you're going to follow through on those. And that's what destroys the talent. Like, so people that have more talent, more resources, more contacts, more experience, micro commitment, continuous follow through, getting shit done all the time will overcome any obstacle you ever have. Getting things done, try, you know, what do they say? To, to eat in, if, if you're going to eat an elephant, it's one bite at a time, right? That's the way that you do it. Little things consistently. Completed simple micro commitments solve the complex problem. If you're frustrated with the big vision, I can't understand the big, big picture. Step back, think about it a little bit, and then go, okay, what can I do now that's going to move me forward a little bit? And always there's the decision. Some of these micro commitments are some of the micro actions that need to be taken. I can have somebody else do. I don't have to do every single thing. Okay. Next. Fear can be the driver. You can be afraid, guys. You can, you're allowed to have that emotion. You're allowed to be scared. That can be the driver that's going to help you follow through. The difference is, is how you treat that fear. So are you letting it be the handbrake or are you letting it be what pushes your foot down on the gas pedal? Right? So think about a lot of these events that you've, these moments that you've had in your life where fear is there. Think about especially the ones where there was a little bit of fear, but you took that leap anyway. Remember those moments because that's what's necessary each and every day. We've all had things that we've had the fear and we've walked away from it. And some of the time that was a good decision. And sometimes we may regret not having taken that chance. But if you start to feel fear about something, stop and say, okay, is it simply because I'm unfamiliar? Which is more often than not the case. You're just not comfortable enough with the technology, with the marketing. Oh my gosh, I just don't know if I can do this. I'm scared. And so I'm scared to follow through on the micro commitments. Or, you know what? This is a great opportunity to kind of pay attention and do the little things that's going to get me where I need to go. And if I do those, man, then I can do whatever I need to. Right? So the question is, is today, what are the daily micro commitments that you'll, you're going to take a swing at? without trying to overthink. What are you going to do today? Macro patience and micro speed. Guys, don't overestimate the short term. Do not underestimate the long term. What you need to do is each and every day identify a handful of things that you can do now that will move you forward. So today for me, I've got a handful of things that I need to do. I need to um, rework and finalize for one of my clients a back-end offer that and I've mentioned before it's going to help people get on TV get published on new sites different things like that so he's consulting with me we got to finalize that and then I got to hand it over so the production team can finalize the the offer stack page now they drive traffic good let's go I've got one of my own funnels I got something to do over here a couple of things that honestly if I just pay attention to it yeah if I try and look at the entire thing it can be overwhelming a couple of micro commitments right? For you guys, the domain, right? That was brought up on the welcome call earlier today. It's something that I've talked about recently. Don't let simple things that like on a grand list of um, elements, you know, scales of one to 10 of importance, don't let the eights, nines, and tens slow you down. Those are minor things. Okay. Make sure that each and every day that you're committing to things, the more that you commit, the more that you take action, the more that confidence will slowly grow because you become a little bit more capable. It is a process, though. You will not be confident right away. You won't be confident right as you launch. You won't be great at things right away. And that's fully normal and totally okay with things. Allow yourself to learn through the process and you're going to end up okay. 
on that note, I'm going to let you go. I want you to think about, I'll answer some questions here in a second, but I'm going to wrap up the recording here. Um, figure out what you need to do to commit to get done today. If it's getting a hold of your accountability rep, it's making sure that you're booked on your strategy session. It's following through with stuff we talked about in the strategy session. If it's connecting your links and getting yourself out there, if it's identifying five different things, so and go posting and post on Sometimes your people have them, what it takes when they have to Just go, whatever. So what do you need to do? How do you stand out? So what you need to do is be that person that's different and it's bigger than you think. Rise from the ashes and fly like the Phoenix that you are.